With me today, I have a brand new and refreshed 2020 Honda Ridgeline. Now, Honda made some big, significant changes to the Ridgeline for this model year. Nothing on the outside, but a lot of things on the inside, including a brand new transmission, new infotainment screen, more standard safety features, and two of the biggest annoying things about the Ridgeline have been fixed. So, is this the best Ridgeline ever? And is it simply the best mid-sized truck you could buy today? Well, keep watching and find out. First, I want to give big thanks to Honda of Lao, which made this video possible. So if you're in the market for a brand new or used Honda, make sure you check them out. Their URL is in the description below. Starting with the outside, the front end of the Ridgeline is very similar to the front end of a Honda Pilot or a Honda Passport. It's curvy and round and isn't as masculine as some of the other bolder and chiseled competition. You do have a large chrome trim piece that spreads from one headlight to the other along with a big black grille. On the upper trims, you have full LED headlights, but all trims get fog lights. Now the side of the Ridgeline definitely looks different than a Pilot due to its 5 foot bed in the rear. This RTE L trim has chrome handles along with chrome window surrounds. However, if you're not a fan of chrome, you could go with the sport or black edition for a complete black look. You also have matte black cladding that surrounds the wheel fenders and lower door panels and 18 inch gray painted alloy wheels. All trim levels on the Ridgeline come with some variant of 18 inch wheels. Now the back of the Ridgeline is very truck like. You have a large tailgate, a big emblem, and a bumper that is covered in matte black. The all wheel drive Ridgeline can tow up to 5,000 pounds while the two wheel drive Ridgeline can tow 3,500 pounds. For 2020, the first annoyance that was fixed was the non-locking tailgate. Previous years, you couldn't lock the tailgate without a special kit. That is no longer the case as the tailgate locks and unlocks with the rest of the doors. The tailgate once unlocked can open two ways. One way is the normal way and the second way is from the side which makes access into the bed much easier. Inside the bed, you'll see the entire area covered in a composite material that is virtually scratch and dent proof. On both sides, you have some standard hooks. In this RTLE, you also get an outlet in the rear for those that need to plug in power tools. There is a hidden trunk inside the bed which no other truck on the market offers. It is massive and is great for smaller things like groceries. You can even fill it up with ice since it is waterproof and there is a drain plug on the bottom. The second noise that was fixed in 2020 is the rear door opening. Previous years, the door opening was narrow and made it hard to get into the second row and load things. I actually created a hack video on how to fix this. And in case you guys have a 2017 to 2019 Ridgeline, take a look now. Inside this RTEL, you have leather cover seats and panels. If you wanted more cargo room, simply fold up the seats for a flat floor bottom. The second row passengers get a pair of vents and a pair of USB ports. With the front row seats slid all the way back, this is due to memory seats, I have only about an inch of leg room, but in normal driving position, it would be more like 3 inches. Also, I have about 45 inches of headroom. There's plenty of width for shoulder room. The front of the cabin looks almost identical to a pilot or passport, but that isn't a bad thing. You have a nicely designed and modern dash, you have a large infotainment screen, and a whole lot of space. The leather wrapped steering wheel looks good and feels good too. Buttons on the right control the adaptive cruise control and the info screen in the gauge cluster. Buttons on the left scrolls through the different modes and menus in the infotainment screen as well as the volume. You also have buttons for phone control, voice control, and heated steering wheel. The gauge cluster has a sizable screen that you can use to get a lot of information with such as the compass, TPMS, trip computer, etc. Buttons on the left of the steering wheel is for mirror control, safety features that you get with Honda Sensing, cargo light and the AC outlet in the trunk, and traction control. On the door panel, you have memory seats, and you do have auto up-down windows for just the front passengers. Now moving on to the infotainment screen, it is a large 8-inch screen that has been updated in 2020. All trims now get this screen. It supports Apple CarPlay and, and Android Auto, and the interface is modern and responsive. 
Besides playing music in the cabin, you could also play music utilizing the trunk as a gigantic speaker. Very, very cool. Now moving on, you do have tri-zone climate control with buttons for fan control mode circulating options. You also have buttons for the three-zone heated seats. Underneath, you have a space for things and a 12V outlet and a USB port. Unfortunately for 2020, the shifter has been replaced with Honda's button shifting. They do take getting used to as you learn the buttons. Pressing the D S button twice will get you into sport mode. In the Ridge Line, you have different modes for traction control for different terrain, including locking rear differential. You also get an engine auto start stop button. You have two cup holders, and underneath the center console, you have a tray for things and another 12V outlet and USB port. On top, you have some home link buttons and controls for the sunroof. As for the engine and transmission, the engine stays the same for 2020. It is still a 3.5 liter V6 pushing 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. The transmission, however, has changed for 2020 to a new 9-speed automatic. For some reason, though, the miles per gallon for highway actually went down by one with the newer 9-speed over its previous 6-speed. All right, let's go for a drive. Let's see how this new ridge line is on the roads. All right, I'm off. So, some of you guys may know this and may have watched my earlier videos from you know about a year ago and that's when i started my channel really i based it on a ridge line because that's what i daily drive a 2018 ridge line and i love the ridge line did a, a review on the ridge line and then i had several videos afterwards showcasing the ridge line in the snow in the ice and also two hacks that are very popular first one is the rear door opening which was really narrow for whatever reason now as you guys saw, that's been fixed, no longer issue. But in case you have an older ridge line and you wanna, you wanna hack it, you wanna make it open bigger, I do have a video you could click above to look at right now. Also, the tailgate, for whatever reason, the tailgate was non-locking. It was not an auto lock or a manual lock. You had to buy a special kit from Honda and you can lock it with a key, but it wasn't integrated with the power locking system of the ridge line. So that was a big annoying thing too, which I have a video about in case you guys want to fix that, you can. But that's been fixed on a 2020 model too. So two of the biggest annoying things about the ridge line have been fixed. This ridge line sits pretty high up. This is a mid-size truck, but of course the platform is very similar to a Honda Pilot, which is a large three-row crossover SUV. However, in the ridge line, I feel like you are a few inches even higher than the Pilot, and I like it. It's more of a commanding view. For some of you guys that are shorter, you may have problems getting in, like for example, my parents, uh, like my mom, for example, who is 5'5", five, five, she has a hard time getting into the ridge line. So some of you guys on the shorter side, you may have problems. Uh, I do like the driving position. This commanding view is great. Visibility is great. I have no problem seeing over the hood, big windshield, the windows, side windows, all windows are nice and big. And even the rear window, um, the headrest, very, very to the outside so you can see inside no problems so the seating position visibility is great in the ridge line very quiet in here now i do hear some wind noise that's creeping into to the into the cabin through the windows right just slight wind noise that's kind of creeping through but overall engine is very quiet no exhaust um, no road noise Cars passing by minimal, so it's very quiet in here. Also, these seats are very comfortable too. Now, on, on this trim I'm reviewing, they come with leather seats, but the one that I daily drive is the cloth seats. And the cloth seats are a little bit harder, but still overall, I think it's a, it's a well-cushioned seat and I enjoy it. I don't really get back pains from it. This leather one feels even better. I mean, it's really, really nice. In terms of the second row seats, I would say this is probably the best in this class. Um, those of you guys that have maybe sat in a Ranger in uh, Colorado, uh, you'll know that the rear seats really, really small. Same thing with the Taco, with the Tacoma. Rear seats really, really small. I mean, narrow, no leg space, no headroom. Width is just a joke. 
in this ridge line, you could actually fit a couple adults back there, right? And with car seats and kids, they're very comfortable back there. So that's another thing about the seats, actually just in terms of space, you get a lot of it in here. The suspension is really soft too. Right now, I'm up to speed already, 45 miles per hour. You guys could see the road has a few patches here and there. I, I really don't feel it. The suspension is really soft. It, it soaks up these bumps and it's a very comfortable ride. And same thing with the steering too. The steering, especially the steering wheel, steering wheel feels nice. This leather um, feels nice. It's well cushioned. And the Ridgeline has a decent weight. It's not very heavy but it has a decent weight to it. And overall, I enjoy the feel of the steering. There's a lot of haters out there saying it's not a truck, it's a pilot with a bed, it looks ugly, it can't perform as well as the other trucks. That may be true. It's not gonna be an off-road king like let's say a Jeep Gladiator. Um, it's not gonna be as fast or as good looking as some of the other trucks out there, but as a daily driver, you really can't beat this truck because it's more comfortable, it's more spacious, and it's a lot more practical too. Um, just everything about this Ridgeline, it does everything pretty well. It doesn't excel at any one thing, but it does pretty much everything well. Even the bed, uh, for example, you don't have to buy a bed liner. It's a composite bed. Um, Honda has videos that shows cylinder blocks being dropped onto it. Absolutely no problem, no dents, nothing like that. It's easy to wash, easy to clean. It's also very wide. It's the only mid-sized truck where you could fit a four foot plywood, a sheet of plywood flat because that's how wide it is. Between the wheel wells, four feet. So you couldn't fit sheets of plywood and it's laying flat, it's not on the side. And plus, the dual action tailgate and the large hidden trunk. I'll tell you, the, the hidden trunk in the bed is the most useful thing ever for a daily driver. Um, if you have a mid-sized truck or a truck, you'll know that when you go buy groceries, for example, you got bags of groceries, it's hard to put them to places, right? You're not gonna throw them in the bed, they're just gonna fly around. Um, inside, if you have a family, you know, you got, you got kids and wives, uh, there's not a lot of space inside to put your groceries. So that trunk is huge. It's much bigger than what it looks like in, in the video. You could fit whatever you want in there, like several, probably eight to 10 bags of groceries, drinks, milk, whatever. It is very useful and you can use it for tailgating. You can put ice in there, you can drain it out, right? And speaking of tailgating, you have the in-bed speaker. It's the only, one, only truck that can do that. Um, so little things like that just makes this good all around. Now this, this new nine-speed automatic is very similar and characteristic compared to my six-speed, although there's a few times at low speeds I'm finding um, it hiccuped a little bit, like a, a you know a slight, um, slight delay, and there's a few times I feel like it's hunting for the right gear more so than my six-speed. So I actually prefer the six-speed over this nine-speed. And I find that sometimes um, the ridge line feels a little bit bogged down because it's trying to save gas and it's shifting too high. So if you actually put it into sport mode, so you have to press this fancy D slash S button again, it feels a little better. Now, speaking of this, this fancy push button shifter, I'm not a fan of it at all. Um, Honda decided to do this, all the new nine speeds um, have this and it doesn't save any space. Honestly, it doesn't look more elegant or luxurious because of it. It just, it just is not needed. The regular shifter is fine and I think Kia proves that very well and Toyota uh, because they can make a normal shifter feel and look really good without trying to do a knob or button style. So I'm not a fan of this at all. Um, also, what I'm not a fan of is this infotainment screen, even though it's new eight inch and it's really responsive and so forth. This is the one that Honda pulled from the pilot and others where it didn't have a volume knob. And 
you know, I don't know why Honda decided for a few years to take out the volume knob from all their infotainment screens and everyone hated it. So Honda brought it back. Unfortunately, this screen is probably left over in a parts bin and Honda's like, what do we do with all these fancy 8-inch screens without the shift, I mean, without the volume knob? Okay, let's put in the new Ridgeline. Unfortunately, that's the case. So there's been many times where I'm here, I'm trying to do volume and it's not here. Now the new safety features with Honda Sensing, that's great. And most Hondas now have a standard. So you get, uh, you get pre-collision uh, warning and braking, auto braking. You get lane keep assist and warning. Um, in here, you also get blind spot monitoring, auto high beams, all that good stuff is in here. So those are good. The 2020 Ridgeline now only has four trim levels. The Sport is the base trim and starts around $34,000. Now the RTLE that I'm reviewing today comes with leather, blind spot system, trunk bed audio, the torque management all wheel drive system, premium audio and more and that tops out around $42,000. Now the top of the line black edition comes in a little bit higher at $43,500. Next, let's look at the good and bad to this brand new Ridgeline. Starting with the good, you get a quiet and comfortable ride. You have a spacious cabin, especially for a mid-sized truck. You get a wide bed with that dual action tailgate, which is really useful. You have a hidden trunk with a tailgate speaker. You also now get locking tailgate and a wider second row opening for the doors. And lastly, Honda Sensing is now standard. As for the bad, there are a few things as well. The exterior looks not as bold as the competition. The 9-speed auto is not as good as the 6-speed in my opinion. The infotainment screen is missing that very special volume knob and finally towing capacity is below the competition. Overall, I'm giving the brand new 2020 Honda Ridgeline a score of 105. If you want to see how it compares with its peers, check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you check out these other videos.